This is an example of an impedance simplification game on level 2 in Circuit Tutor. So we'll enter impedance simplification. Normally you would start by taking the pretest, um, which we've already done here, um, and then you would have to do the tutorial, the introductory web-based uh, multiple choice tutorial, which would teach you the basic concepts relevant to the game. So it's important to watch that, or to go through that rather, before you uh, attempt the exercises. Now we have examples at the different levels, and we'll look now at an example at the medium level. So here is an example problem where we're trying to find the input impedance looking into this circuit at these terminals. And notice that this circuit is given to us in the time domain. We know that because the values of the reactive elements, the inductors and capacitors, are given in Henry's and Farad's respectively. That shows that we're in the time domain. Impedance doesn't really exist in the time domain, so it's shown here um, only for reference, but it really only exists in the phasor domain. And notice here it specifies that we're operating our circuit at a frequency of 50 kilohertz, meaning that's the frequency of the input source we're using to measure the impedance. Impedances are a strong function of frequency, so that's an important piece of information we will need to convert this into the phasor domain. Remember that kilohertz is, or 50 kilohertz is the cycle frequency, it is not the angular frequency omega, which would be 2 pi times the cycle frequency, because remember uh, that this is the number of cycles per second, that's the former uh, definition of hertz, rather than omega, which is radians per second. And there are 2 pi radians in every cycle. Every time we go through a complete sinusoid, basically we're going around the unit circle, so that's 2 pi radians. And even though this is inverse seconds, it is not the same as a radian per second, even though radian is dimensionless, because this denotes the cycle frequency and omega denotes radian frequency, which is about a factor of 6.28 difference. So there's a very big difference. Okay, so let's look at the solution to this. So the first step here is actually to convert this into the phasor domain by replacing the values of the reactive elements with their impedances, which notice now are in ohms. That tells us immediately we're in the phasor domain. The resistors carry over directly, so they just the 2 ohm becomes 2 ohm and 9 ohm stays 9 ohm. Um, here it shows how the angular time frequency is calculated from the cycle frequency by multiplying by 2 pi. So 2 pi times 50 kilohertz gives us 100 pi kiloradians per second or just doing the math there, that's 314.2 kiloradians per second. Then that value is used to convert, for example, the inductance of 20 microhenries um, to an impedance, which is given by the formula J omega L for an inductor, where J is the square root of negative one, what's usually called I in math or physics classes. Um, but electrical engineers use J because I denotes current. Omega is the angular frequency that we have here, and then L is the value of the inductance. So we simply insert those values, we put in the omega, the 314.2 kiloradians per second, and the inductance of 20 microhenries, and then multiplying that out, um, taking into account the 10 to the third and 10 to the minus sixth factor here for the pre metric prefixes, that works out to J 6.28 ohms. And how do we get ohms? Well, you should always check the units. So this is basically a Henry per second, since radian's not a real unit. And Henry per second, as shown down here, a Henry um, can also be thought of as an ohm second, or you can think of it as a uh, Weber uh, per amp, and Weber is a volt second. So you can all think of it as, as a volt second per amp divided by seconds. So the seconds cancel out, giving us volt per amp, which is indeed an ohm based on Ohm's law. And then we have to convert the 0.8 microfarad capacitance to an impedance. So we take that 0.8 microfarad value and we have to use the formula that the impedance of a capacitor is 1 over J omega C, the quantity J omega C. J again, of course, being the square root of minus 1. And equivalently, uh, if we multiply, for example, by J over J, or negative J over J, it doesn't really matter, um, remember that j squared, by definition, is negative 1. So the j will be removed from the denominator, and then we have negative j in the numerator. So remember that 1 over j is negative j. 
And so we can write that just for simplicity, then put in the omega, as we did before, and the value of the capacitance, including the microfarads, and working out the math there, taking into account the metric prefixes on a calculator, um, that will give us negative J 3.98 ohms. And I'll show you the actual calculation in the exercise. And again, we check the units that this is basically, um, since uh, seconds is in the denominator of the denominator, that basically is second divided by farad. And a second divided by a farad, since a farad is a coulomb per volt, based on Q equals CV for a capacitor, we can say that that's a volt second per coulomb. And then a coulomb per second is an ampere, so we can replace the coulomb and the second by an ampere in the denominator, and a volt per amp, again, is an ohm. So we verified that these are, in fact, in ohms. Okay, so having converted this now into the phasor domain, now we can begin to simplify that. We cannot combine elements in the time domain. That isn't possible to combine, for example, a capacitor and a resistor in the time domain. That can only be done in the phasor domain. And the basic rule to remember is that impedances combine much like resistances do in the DC circuits. So, for example, here we have a 9 ohm and a minus J 3.98 ohm. Um, those are in series with each other. Um, notice, by the way, that because we do have terminals here, the 9 ohm and the inductive impedance are not in series. That's because we have to apply an LCR meter, that is an inductance capacitance resistance meter, at these terminals, just as we would use, for example, a, a conventional ohmmeter for uh, measuring resistance. And what that does, it basically applies an AC voltage here and measures the resulting AC current, or it might do it the other way around, force an AC current and measure the resulting AC voltage. But either way, there's going to be current existing in these wires, and therefore um, this current here is not the same current as the current here. So these are not in series, even though you might uh, initially think that that was the case. So we don't combine those, but we can combine these two, which are in series, because there's no terminal over here um, on this node. And again, remember that impedances behave just like resistances. So these two simply add, and that just gives us a complex valued impedance, which we represent as a rectangular shaped box to indicate it's a general impedance. It's not either a pure uh, resistor or capacitor, but it's a combination of the two. And then if we want to combine impedances in parallel like we do here, then we have to remember that just like resistors, we have to take the reciprocal of each impedance, add those reciprocals, and then take the reciprocal or the inverse of the result. Now, for two elements, that's equivalent to a product over a sum formula. Again, you doing full complex arithmetic here, so that has to be done on a calculator that can handle complex numbers. And that can be computed in one step to give us this complex value of the final impedance um, for Z2, which is the parallel combination of these two. And then finally, we just add those in series again. And here you would add those impedances to get the final impedance of the problem. So that would be the input impedance. OK, so having reviewed an example, let's do a problem. So we will need a scientific number that can handle complex numbers. So for example, a TI-83 or 84 or 89 uh, would be able to do that, um, or some Casio models as well. Um, the instructions are shown here um, in detail if you need those instructions. So now we're being shown the circuit diagram in the time domain up here, which again, we recognize because it has farads and Henry's. And we have to convert that now into the phasor domain down here. And that's where the impedances are going to be expressed in ohms for the reactive elements. The resistors, of course, those values just carry over directly. So the first thing we have to do is to compute the impedance of both the, in the inductor and the capacitor. At this frequency, in this case, it's given to be 10 kilohertz. And we have these values. So we're going to use a, a calculator to do that and I'm using an emulator for a uh, TI-84 uh, plus here, uh, which is a typical calculator you might use. Um, if you have a different model, then you'll have to look up how to do that with uh, the different model. Okay, so we know for the inductor that the impedance is J omega L. That's a formula that generally should be memorized. 
So in order to do that calculation, uh, on the calculator, J is represented by I. But before we do this, I should point out that in order to use complex numbers with a calculator like this, we have to first make sure that we are in a complex mode. If you're in a real mode, you will not get the right answers to any calculations. Therefore, we have to make sure that we have the calculator set to work with complex numbers. So we have to indicate, or have to press mode here first, and then we can check down here. Now I already have it set. Um, normally, by default, you would be in this real mode here, and that's where it will not work properly. So we're gonna go down there, and then I would simply go over to the desired mode, which is already set in this case, but if it wasn't, you'd go over here and then press enter on the calculator. And that will put it into the, uh, in this case, this is the rectangular form mode. This would be the polar form of the complex number in polar coordinates. Um, for purposes right now, in this exercise, we want to be in rectangular mode. And since we're in rectangular mode, it doesn't really matter whether we use radians or degrees. Um, but for other purposes, it might matter. So I'll worry about that later. Okay, now to get out of the uh, mode setting, I'll just press clear. And now we will uh, do the J omega L. So we're gonna press second, and then we press I, which as you notice is on the uh, decimal point key. But we have to use the second key to get that. So there's an I, which is the square root of minus one, uh, what we're calling J. And then we have to multiply that times the omega. Um, and I guess we could have computed that first, would have probably been the easiest way. So in fact, let's um, actually do that. Um, probably best to do that first. So I'm gonna go two times the pi. So we go second pi times 10, and now I need the exponent, so I'll go E3 for the kilohertz. So this will be the omega two pi times 10 kilohertz. And so that gives us a value of 62,831, uh, et cetera, radians per second. Okay, so now we'll do the inductive impedance. So we'll go second i times that omega value. And I can go up and just select that and hit enter times uh, the inductance itself, which is 50 microhenries. So I'm gonna have 50 E and then the microhenries would be negative six for the exponent. And that should be the full thing. And notice I'm carrying through all the digits by doing it this way, so that will ensure that I have accuracy as opposed to rounding this off. It's really better to use the exact results in the calculator, or I shouldn't say exact, but very accurate results here. So that gives me um, the impedance there, and I can enter that now into the system for the inductor. So I'm gonna type that as J times 3.142 uh, ohms to four significant digits. Now let's do the capacitive impedance here. And so now we're gonna need one divided by, I'll take a parenthesis there since I have a product, so second i, and then we need the omega. So I'm gonna go up there, just like that again, um, times the uh, capacitance, which is the three microfarads. So that would be three e, Oops, I forgot the minus sign, so I'll back up there and do the minus six. And close parentheses there. And so I have the J omega C there, so I'll press enter. And that gives us a negative imaginary value. Remember that for capacitor or capacitive impedances, you should always have negative imaginary values because it's that negative J over omega C. For inductive impedances, you should always have positive imaginary values. If you don't, then you've made a mistake, and that would be a good check. So let's go enter that now, and that's going to be negative J 5.305 ohms, and we'll check the impedances over here. Okay, so that's correct. Now it's gonna ask me to simplify the circuit by combining things in series and parallel. And again, you have to remember that these two elements will not be in series because of the fact they're connected to a terminal and there's gonna be current existing in this wire and over here due to the LCR meter that is implied here by showing Zn because we're measuring impedance from 
these terminals, that means we have to be attaching an LCR meter out here. So these are definitely not going to be in series. They are, however, in parallel because they share the same two nodes. There's a node here, and then of course the node down here. So I'll click on both of those and combine those in parallel by clicking there. So now we have to compute that value. And we can do product over the sum, but it's probably easier to use the reciprocal formula. So I'm going to go 1 divided by, uh, open parenthesis, and now I need to take uh, 1 divided by this impedance. So I'm going to have another parenthesis there since I have a product. So negative i 5.3. using implicit multiplication there, which is allowed. And close that parenthesis. And now I have plus 1 divided by parenthesis again. Um, well, actually, I didn't really need the parenthesis there, so I'll just back up and make that an 8, because that's not a complex number. And now I close parenthesis for the denominator. And press Enter. And that should give us the combined impedance there, which is 2.44 minus I 3.683. So let's type that there. And I'll type it as a J, because that's the notation we want to use in electron engineering. OK, and of course, uh, you may have noticed that the answer was actually printed on that form, because that's only because I'm in instructor mode. You will not, of course, see the answer um, when you're doing the problem. OK, so now what the computer already did for me automatically was it removed um, one of the elements, the one that was up here, and replaced that by an open circuit, because if we're combining in parallel, one of those then has to be an open circuit, and the other one acquires then the combined impedance of the two, so that Z1 is shown here below the circuit diagram just because there's not always room on the circuit diagram to show such a long number. Okay, so now we have three elements that are all in series, so we'll just combine those all at once. And combining uh, complex numbers in series, is, or impedances rather, in series is quite easy because we just add their values as you would for resistors in series. It's just now that they're complex numbers. So I'm going to combine those in series and it asks me to enter the value. So um, I'll just uh, take this number, which was the Z1 value. So I have to go up there and enter. Take that, or I could have just used, uh, I could have, I guess, just typed a plus sign and used the answer. But anyway, that plus um, I times uh, 3.14. plus 8. And so that should be the sum. And so that's going to be 10.44 minus uh, J0.5434. So I'll enter that here. And check that value. And that is correct. And in fact, now we're down to a single uh, impedance. So we're basically done. And I will point out that, um, of course, you won't have a cheat button. You can, if you need to, give up at any point in a problem. There is no grade penalty for doing that. Um, you'll simply be given another problem to solve of a similar type. Um, if you need help um, to see that original help screen, you can do that. Um, if you need the instructions, um, they're shown here again. Um, and there will also be a video help button, which, of course, accesses the video you're watching now. Um, that's not here yet because I haven't. Uh, uh, I'm just now recording that video, but that will be there when you use it. Um, so now we're done. So we just press cannot simplify further. And it tells us we finished the problem. And now it would actually go on um, to give us another problem um, of a similar type. And we would go ahead to solve that one the same way. But that concludes um, the exercise.